As you can see from the temperatures outside, we've been in the teens and lower. Um, I think one day last week it was one degree in the morning. So that was plenty cold. Uh, question is, how do, you, how do you stay warm in this kind of weather? How do you heat? Well, as you can see, we heat with the wood burner. And that is our main source of heat that we use. Now we also have this little supplemental oil heater. It is a uh, simple little thing and it you're not supposed to touch it but it I mean it it doesn't get super hot but it puts out enough heat that if the temperature outside is in the 40s or 50s that thing will keep the house comfortable but anything below that this is our source of heat this is a buck stove You can hear the fan running it blows out air here here under here and underneath here it blows out hot air so all around it's blowing out a lot of hot air it's got a little switch here you can turn the fan down this is the intake where it draws air in and then it, it blows it out so there's an intake on both sides and this is a pretty good sized stove so I can fit nice big chunks of wood in there. I like to call those all-nighters because the great big chunks will burn all night and I'll still have hot coals in there come morning. Uh, kind of keeps the temperature eh, probably in the upper 50s in here in the morning when we get up, which is cold, but once you get this thing going, the house will heat up rather quickly. Give it about a half hour and it's it's pretty warm now. If we're active in the house, moving around, doing a lot of stuff, uh, we can actually be sweating and we'll close this down. I can control the temperature on this to some degree with the draft. So drafts are closed right now, but you'll see if I slide that open, that allows more air in there and right away the flames kick up. So I keep the closed and uh, it'll burn somewhat slower. And that's what we want, a nice slow burn today. It's in the teens, so that's keeping us warm enough. And then I'll keep that fan on high so it keeps blowing out heat. Now, the other thing that works in this house is we have, you know, this high ceiling. It goes up, I think, 16 foot. And we have a ceiling fan that keeps pushing the hot air down and circulating it through this entire great room area. So the bedrooms in the back are going to be just a little bit cooler, and that's fine. Uh, but everything out here we can keep fairly comfortable. Now, those aren't our only two sources of heat. We also heat with propane. We have a regular propane furnace in here, and that uh, heats the house also. Now, we don't keep this on all the time. In fact, in the wintertime, a lot of times we have our thermostat set right around 50. So if we keep the house upstairs above 50, this thing will never come on, and we're not using propane. Propane is very expensive, and so we try to limit the use of that down to nothing. But you have to have a supplemental heat, because say you go away for the day, and you, uh, you nobody's here to put wood on the fire, and that fire goes out upstairs. It's going to get pretty chilly, and when it gets down below 50 degrees, this will come on, and it'll basically keep our pipes from freezing. So this is a supplement to what we heat with. And with propane, you have to have a propane tank. So we've got a 500 gallon tank. You can't see it. It's over there behind the shed, kind of hidden. Uh, but it's a nice big torpedo like uh, white tank that keeps the propane in there. 500 gallons. And when they fill it, I think they usually put somewhere around 400 gallons in there. Uh, you can't fill it all the way to the top. You have to leave some air pressure in there to push the propane up to the house. Uh, 
but the guy will come and he has to come all the way up the driveway he has to back all the way up there and drag a hose back behind the shed to refill a propane tank and we have our setup on an automatic refill so we don't have to call and order propane whenever he's in the area he stops and tops off the tank uh, the problem with propane is that the like gasoline that price fluctuates there's different companies you can use to get propane out here we don't have natural gas we don't have the only other resource we could use for heat would be electric and electric as you know is expensive too so we go on with the propane and we're on a budget plan they figure out how much propane you use all year round and then they break it down and and you just do budget payments uh, but like I said when you burn wood you've got to have a wood supply and you've got to have it somewhere where it's easy to get to so we keep ours on the front porch here but as you can see my pile is dwindling down I've had burnt I've had it stacked up clear above this uh, handrail here twice already this winter and have used it all um, I have some of the logs left over there that I cut the tree down and I'm probably going to have to cut some more trees down here really quick uh, the power company cut some trees across the street and they left the logs laying there in the neighbor's yard a big pile of them I can never catch the neighbors at home and it doesn't look like they use that wood at all uh, they're renters. I'm going to ask them if I can haul some of that wood over here or all of that wood over here and then I'll have a pretty good supply of firewood. So it's pretty cozy in here. Um, you can hear the fan blowing back there and that's pretty constant. Unless it's a warmer day we turn it on the low level where it's not so loud. Uh, but that's blowing out heat all the time and it, it does have I think three different speeds. The biggest problem with burning wood is it's dirty. You know, you you have the wood stacked up outside, <clears throat> uh, but you still got to carry it in the house. In this case, we got to carry it all the way through and load it in the stove. Whenever you open those doors on the stove, you're going to get ashes and stuff that come out. So you'll notice, you know, on the floor here, I've uh, I've got stone and tile all the way around there so if anything were to tumble out of there and it does you'll have hot uh, coals big chunks that sometimes it fall against the door you'll open the door and they'll tumble right out onto the floor so you don't want carpeting or anything around there now if you're going to purchase a wood burner uh, there's a lot of different options out there and there are some that I would not recommend um, some of the uh, stores will will sell you these small wood burners and they might be fine for a show and maybe just taking the chill off of a small room but the problem is they're not built to withstand high temperatures uh, this one is a very good high quality stove and you can get that thing very 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 hot uh, in, in fact you get it too hot sometimes so make sure you're getting a good brand name stove when you do it now this one I bought it was reconditioned so it was not brand new um, there was a shop in Millersburg Ohio and he sold wood burners and he had a couple reconditioned ones or, or ones that he had pulled out of somewhere else uh, sandblasted them down repainted them with the heat resistant paint um, had them all checked out and ready to go and the thing was like brand new so I got it for like half price um, but they can be very expensive uh, there's different options to burning I guess some of them have pellets you can burn in um, this is straight up throw the wood in there and burn it you gotta be careful uh, what types of wood you have available to burn um, one of the worst woods that you could ever use is pine uh, it has a lot of pitch in it. It burns fast. Uh, it doesn't keep a hot coal. It, it's just a poor, poor source of, of heat. Um, in our case, we have a lot of ash trees in the yard, as I've shown you before. And uh, sadly, they've all died from the uh, beetles that got into them. Uh, bad bad blight that came off of Lake Michigan and worked its way all the way down through Ohio killing all the ash trees 
very few of them are still surviving and those ones might be gone too in the future but they are great for firewood because it's a hardwood and it, and it makes a nice hot coal I loaded this thing up hours ago and, and I can still feel the heat on the back of my head coming off of this thing so it's heating up our house very very well um, the ash doesn't make a lot of creosote some woods especially if they're wet will sizzle and you'll get creosote now let me talk about the chimney for a minute because you'll see our chimney goes up uh, 16 feet up and it goes right through the ceiling and right out through the roof that's a best case scenario for a wood burning stove to have a chimney that goes straight up um, a lot of times they'll have a kink where your chimney will will go up and then elbow out through a wall and go up and what happens is, is a creosote that will fall down from the chimney will lay on that that elbow and it will, can cause a uh, pretty serious chimney fire um, when you do burn wood uh, it's it's a good idea to clean your chimney you can buy those chimney cleaning kits relatively cheap I think I saw one that was right around twenty dollars and then you might spend a little more for them it's just like a huge wire brush you do have to go up on the roof to do it uh, if you're not real agile it's something you maybe you don't want to do uh, it can be pretty expensive to hire a chimney sweep though to clean your chimney and it's something that should be done probably every year uh, some people like to do it more often than not but like I said it means you have to go up on the roof uh, right now it's winter time uh, you can't really go up on our roof <laughs> it's all covered with snow I don't know how you would get up there without breaking your neck so it would be something I would do in the spring or the fall uh, but simply climb up the wire brush has uh, extensions you can screw on and just keep pushing it down until you hit the bottom and all the ashes will come out into the stove uh, where you scrape them up with a bucket. That's the other thing we I have to do on a regular basis. About every other day I have a bucket out on the porch, my ash bucket. So I have to bring it in, open the doors up when hopefully when there's not a lot of fire in there I do it first thing in the morning when there's not a lot of coals and I can scoop out all of the loose ashes and get them out of there uh, and then start a new fire in there because the ashes will build build up build up to where when you open the door they literally fall out of the door and <laughs> it like I said it makes a mess so you get a lot of dust in your house a lot of you know ash dust uh, it'll lay on everything with a film, so there's a lot of cleaning that has to be done to keep up with it. Uh, all in all, though, it makes a very enjoyable heat. It's dependable. Uh, there's not much there to break down. I think I replaced the blower on this one one time, and this thing's been in here for, oh my gosh, probably 30 years I've had this wood burner. Now, prior to that, I had a different model and uh, I bought it from a local store, a chain store, and it lasted for a couple years, but uh, it was compromised. Uh, somehow up in the top, right, right where the chimney pipe reaches the top of the wood burner, uh, the creosote that was coming down the chimney, which is very corrosive. It, it ate a hole in the top of the inside which created more of a draft so when the fan was on the fan was actually feeding oxygen and uh, the fire went up into the chimney and and this bottom part of the chimney here just got red hot I mean orange glowing red hot my daughter happened to be home and she could hear the the ticking and uh, she could smell the, the the smell of that hot metal and she came downstairs and she saw what was going on and she was kind of helpless as to what to do well what happened was this part of the pipe got so hot that it actually compromised it actually collapsed and the whole thing fell out of the ceiling this whole section came crashing down onto the floor here and caught the carpet on fire it's a good thing she was home 
she grabbed a uh, gallon jug of water out of the kitchen kitchen right over here so she grabbed a jug of water and she doused the flames uh, poured water all over the hot metal so that the carpet wouldn't burn anymore but there was a lot of damage um, there was burn marks all over the carpet there was a couch that that had burn marks on it uh, the stove was useless at that point she couldn't even use it anymore um, so it ended up being an insurance job a homeowner's insurance claim uh, we had to replace carpet we had to extend the uh, the tile out here around the yeah, move back so you can see it but all that tile around there and the stonework we had to replace um, had to replace the stove and had to replace the entire chimney which was another big cost uh, this chimney is is like triple wall uh, ventilated so air moves through it to keep it cool all the way up through the ceiling and then where it goes up through the roof it is a triple insulated all the way up through the roof and out uh, insulated pipe I would recommend if you plan on getting a wood burner if you're interested in a wood burner make sure it is installed the specifications make sure your chimney is put into a, a code specific regulations uh, to avoid from having a disaster or a fire uh, make sure you have the clearances all around the chimney keep flammable objects away from it and uh, aside from the work i think you'll be pretty pleased with the heat output